Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're here for another Sunday Sew Along. So if you have been um, following along, we've just done the first week of RM5894. Am I saying that right? 5894. God, I feel like I've been <laughs> saying and writing it down so much. I probably just butchered it. I'll put a picture of the pattern right here. It's a Palmer Pledge pattern. Um, and we did a little bit of fitting and a muslin last week. Talked about picking our size. Now, since then, I have received an email from the Patty Palmer. Um, so after I had passed out and then revived myself um, when checking my email, um, she is being so very helpful. So number one, I just want to say there is some really good jean information stuff coming from the Palmer Pledge Company soon. So just going to put that little teaser out there. <laughs> um, for those of you that are still scared, I know fitting can be a huge thing with jeans. Honestly, once we get into the sew along and you're actually sewing them, you're going to see that they're not hard really at all. Um, it's the fitting that can be ish an issue. However, she also gave me some tips um, on things. Now, I, I'm nervous to do the tissue fitting because I've just never done the tissue fitting. So I think I'm definitely going to try another Palmer Pledge pattern um, at some point here in the near future um, and do the actual tissue fitting and we can kind of learn together <laughs> going through the instructions and stuff that are in the envelope um, or even in their books. So she said that um, putting together and doing a tissue fitting um, you can find either in the pattern so there's actually guides there are in there in the pattern and we'll go through that um, a little bit here in just a second or on page 23 of her book um, uh, oh, Fit for Real People. <laughs> it just went right out of my head. I think it's Fit for Real People is the one that, that she said. They've got quite a few books. All of them are fantastic. I own Fit for Real People and Pants for Real People. Um, they're both really good ones. So definitely if you're looking for anything for... Oh, actually, I'll be talking more about my favorite books on the channel here soon. So um, stay tuned for that. But anyway... <laughs> She also gave me some tips on choosing your size and things that they are discovering even since that pattern has been printed about jeans. Um, so one of the things is that she recommended, um, you know, I had mentioned that I pick my size based off the finished measurement um, for my hip, which is what she also recommends. But she was saying, um, get as close to your hip measurement as possible. So I picked the size that's an inch and a half bigger than my hip measurement. She was suggesting maybe even going down another size um, because there are one inch seam allowances on the out seam, on the outside and on the inseam um, to help with that so that you can adjust and let out a little bit as you need. So you do need ease, especially if you're using a non-stretch denim, but you just don't need much. Um, another thing that she said about crotch depth. So when you are doing a muslin or the tissue fitting and you put, you know, elastic around your waist to, to really, um, which is a, I don't really, I should do that because it'd be easier for you guys to see where my natural waist is when we're doing fitting, especially with pants. Um, I apologize. <laughs> but she said just to, to put the elastic where you want your jeans to hit. So if you like it a little below your natural waist, if you want it at your natural waist, put the elastic there, but you want the, um, the tissue or the jean, the muslin, to fit actually a half of an inch below that line. So you want the top of that waistband to be a half of an inch below your elastic. Because they are finding in jeans, you need about a half of an inch less than your crotch depth. Um, just because of the way, especially with stretch denim, um, but even with the more the rigid non-stretch denim as well. It's just the way jeans are supposed to fit, um, the way they're supposed to be snugger, and then they start to mold your body, and they become like that well-worn pair of slippers, kind of, um, when all is said and done after you've really broken things in. Um, another thing that she said that was a common fit adjustment, if you have an issue with your pants not pulling up all the way in the back, if they, you know, slide down just a little bit. Now, sometimes if you have a big difference, you have to do a sway back adjustment where you're, you know, raising the crotch depth and all of that. So definitely. But sometimes if you need just a little bit, which is usually what I need, and she said it's a very common adjustment, you may just need to lower the crotch curve, which is really just scooping out the crotch curve. Um, and I'll show you on the pattern, they even have lines there for where to um, sew, basically, if you are needing that adjustment. 
Um, also, she commented that if you are needing to add extra to the back, center back seam allowance for even more, you know, if it, it dips down really low in the back, do all of that on the back piece, not on the yoke. Don't mess with the yoke. Um, just do that through the back piece. And again, there's lines, um, where to cut, spread, all that kind of stuff on those Palmer Pledge patterns, which is what, another thing that I really love about them. It makes altering them really, really easy. So I just wanted to, um, point out those few things if you're having issues with the muslin or, um, figuring that out. And I also highly recommend, I put a link to the, um, it's down below for finding, um, someone that does tissue fitting near you. Um, I, I, my friend Evelyn does it that's here, uh, nearby. I probably need to just take a class, but there's what I need to do. <laughs> because I have another friend that learned the tissue fitting method just as like a regular home sewist and um, loves it. Like it has, like that's the way she fits her patterns now all the time. Um, and she is a, a very good, she's a very good seamstress, a very good um, precision seamstress. Hi, Marissa. <laughs> but she, I know, has been very much enjoys that fitting process as well. So it's probably something that, I mean, I'm always wanting to learn. I never want to get stuck in a rut of what, because I've always done it this way, that's the way that I do it. I, you know, you get things that, you know, you find that that just works the best and that's the way you want to do certain things. But I always want to be trying new things, you know, because maybe there is something better out there or something that's just better for me or whatever. So that is definitely something I want to explore in further um, sew-alongs. Um, but for this one, just, in an essence of time because I, I've got my weeks, you know, planned out for this sew along and we actually need to get started sewing. Um, and then, cause I want to tackle a coat next. Um, I've had a lot of requests for a coat. I've not picked a pattern out yet, so <laughs> we'll be getting to that. But yeah, I really wanted to do, um, a coat next. Um, and again, I've had a lot of requests and I love sewing coats. So anyway, that's kind of the idea for the next sew along. But the other thing I wanted to note about fitting is that, um, my waistband. So I cut the waistband in half and I've done a contoured waistband. And last week I had taken the full inch and a half out of the center back and it made a very like boomerang um, shaped waistband. And I had mentioned that you could also, you know, spread that out. Um, and I did. That's exactly what I did. A contoured waistband is just not something I normally have to do, just the way my body is shaped. So um, it's just not an adjustment that I do a lot. So yeah it wasn't surprising that I went back and changed my mind. So basically what I did, and I will again take you over to the cutting table to show you exactly what I've done, but I, um, instead of taking the full inch and a half out of center back, I took a half inch out of center back and then a half an inch out of each side seam. Um, well, not side seam, it's out of the spot where the side seam would be. So it is a more gentle curve for that waistband. Um, alternate alternatively, <laughs> you could also cut the waistband into three parts. Now you've got to label everything because you want to have a right side and a left side and then your center back and you'll need two of everything um, because you've got your waistband and then your waistband facing that'll get sewn. Um, so that is an option and that does give you some more um, fitting options there at the side seam if you need it. But I think um, what we're going to do is kind of follow along with the pattern and when we get to the part where the way this is going to sew is that we're going to do our front, sew up our front, and do everything but the fly. Then the next week, we're going to insert the fly. The following week, we will do the back of the pants. And then the week after that, we'll put the pants together, but we will do a um, baste them first at both the out seam and the inseam to do any um, last minute fitting that we think we might want to do. That will all happen. Um, you know, we'll baste and do that with the actual jeans. Uh, then once we've decided if there's any fit issues or what we want to change, then we'll actually sew that inseam and that outseam. Um, and then the next week we will do uh, the waistband and the um, butt loops and then hammer in our hardware. So that's kind of what we've got, uh, the kind of the breakdown, I think, for the videos going forward um, to get through our jeans. Oh, hemming will come in there. Hemming, I like to do the very last. Good gracious. So I may break it up into one more. I may do the hardware and the hemming at the very, very last. We'll see. I'll see how like it times out. Um, I liked, I, I just like doing the um, shorter videos um, in more manageable chunks where it kind of makes sense to break. That way people, when you're going back, because you don't have to sew this jeans pattern, um, making jeans is very similar across the board. So if you're making a different pattern and you just want you know, to kind of follow along-ish. I mean, there'll be some differences in the patterns, obviously. You know, you'll have different shaped pockets or, you know, some have the sew-on fly, some have the grown-on fly, um, you know, that kind of thing, which isn't, they're not anything major in uh, differences in sewing jeans, but 
um, this way you can easily go through um, every time you sew a pair of jeans if you'd like. Okay, I think that that kind of covers some of the questions that I had last week. I also had some questions about me shortening the leg of my pant where it looked like I was doubling up how much I shortened. And I think what people were seeing is just because of the overlap with the tissue because you can see so much in the back that it looked like I was doing it more. Now I did shorten it too much and then I went back and, and added back an inch and a half. Um, but yes, I have just shortened both the front and the back two and a half inches. So um, I think it just gets kind of confusing, like the way, I don't know, so I think me cutting the pattern and then moving it was getting confusing. Um, it's the same as if you're folding it. It just looks like more in the back because it hasn't been folded. It's been slid, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take you over to the cutting table. I'm gonna show you the waistband and kind of how I have done that. And uh, yeah, and then I'm gonna show you, I am going to cut my um, fly onto the jean. I'm not gonna cut it separately. Um, my denim is a little bit thick and I would just rather not have the bulk that's there. Um, again, I think that that's super helpful, the way that the Palmer Pledge patterns are made because you can do all of your adjustments and then either add the fly on to cut it on or do it the way that the pattern has you doing it by you know cutting it and then sewing it on. So, because it has you sewing it on, I just think one side, but I like having the extra um, fabric for both sides. I like that. I think it gives us a little bit more stability at the fly, personally. Um, personal preferences, you know, just the way I like to wear and, I mean, yeah, <laughs> just personal preferences. Um, it's actually very similar. The Megan Nielsen, um, I think it's the Dawn's. Is it the Dawn jeans? Maybe both the Dawn and the Ash. I've made both of them. Um, they have a sewn on fly as well and they do it very similar to the way that this um, jean pattern does it as well. So, you know, to each their own, but I am going to do mine grown on. Okay, it's a lot of babble. Almost 12 minutes of babble. <laughs> Alright, so let's go over to the cutting table and I will show you what we're going to cut and then let's get these front of these jeans sewn up. Okay, so I just want to show you my waistband piece. So here, at, this is the, the top of the waistband that will fit against my body. This is the part that gets connected to the jeans. Um, I let an inch back out on this one, a half inch on either side, um, so that just a half of an inch was taken up here. So I had to do some surgery here. <laughs> and then I've taken a half an inch in on both of these sides. Obviously, I added the seam allowance last time on the top. The seam allowance is already added on the bottom because um, it was the original pattern piece. So this is my new waistband piece now. I've made my grain... Um, perpendicular to the um, center back, so the straight of grain. Now, someone had mentioned that they actually had a pair of jeans that the um, waistband was cut on the bias and how comfortable that they were. So that is something to consider too. You can do the bias wherever you want. Um, you know, it's up to you. You can do it, you know, cross grain. You could do it, you know, with the grain, you know, whatever, or bias. So, you know, that's definitely something you can play around with and find something that's comfortable for you. But that's the changes that I've made to the waistband. Now, I'm going to be cutting out um, two of these out of my denim, two of my back pocket out of my denim. Um, we'll do everything that's two. Two yokes, which is number seven. Um, then obviously two fronts and two backs. Two fronts and two backs. And then I'm going to be cutting one of my, um, kind of the fly shield that's here. I'm gonna be cutting one of my coin pocket and one of my um, belt loops. And actually my belt loops, I'm actually gonna cut these to where the one of the edges of my belt loops is against my selvage. Um, because then you do, you can serge that edge if you want, but that's just kind of a neat finish just to have the selvage. So I will show you guys, and um, that's what I'm how I'm going to cut it out. Just I'm basically just going to bump one of the straight edges up to the selvage. Um, so I'll just be cutting three sides around this, um, and you guys will see that when we get to the um, belt loops or the belt carrier part of it. Now we also have oh I forgot to mention this one. Sorry, piece two, which is your side front. Um, Part of the pocket basically this gets cut out of your denim as well so um i will cut two out of this size two now piece three here which is they call it the pocket facing this gets cut out of pocket lining so this just a strong cotton is good quilting cotton works whatever um 
And this pattern is a little different. I've made a lot of uh, patterns that have like a side front that actually gets like a facing that gets sewn onto this and that this is pocketing too. And then you sew the facing on, but this, we're gonna follow the pattern on this one. So this gets cut out of the denim and then this gets cut out of um, lining fabric or just a, a nice woven. And then this is the fly, the fly facing. And I'm actually going to show you real quick how I'm gonna actually cut, sew this or cut this on to the front instead of sewing it on. Otherwise you'll just be cutting one of these. Um, I am going to use this piece to cut out two pieces of interfacing, not just one. I want to interface both of my flies. I just like the way that it goes in. The fly goes in better that way. So on that note, I'm going to pull, put these all aside for a minute. The tissue paper can get a little confusing when you can see all the layers underneath it. Okay, so with my front, obviously... I will lay this out, um, not just in the middle of my fabric like I have it now. I just wanna show you what this is gonna look like when it's all said and done. Oh, I wanted to talk about the back too. Okay, hold on, we'll come back to that in just a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do, they have very, very handily put in the seam or the sewing line basically here at center front. Um, then you can see your size here, which is five eighths of an inch. Very helpful. Again, you have a one inch seam allowance at the inseam seam and one inch seam allowance at the um, outer seam. So keep that in mind. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my dot here. Now you could draw in your seam allowance um, on this facing piece if you wanted to. I'm totally eyeballing it. So your notches will line up, they'll be across from each other basically. So you'll have an inch and a quarter overlap uh, at the top because you, you know, the seam allowance here and then the seam allowance here. So the seam line would be right here at five eighths. So if that looks like, oh my gosh, that's so much of an overlap, that's okay. And then because I don't want to tape it, you could tape it down, but um, I don't want my pattern to rip. So what I'll do is I will just very carefully because I'm going to use a rotary cutter. We'll set down. Pattern weights, just like that. So then when I'm cutting, I'm just going to go cut and then cut around and then through. Okay. So then I'll have both sides will have this. And then I will use this piece number five to cut out my interfacing and I'll cut two interfacing out of that. Okay. I hope that helps leave any questions you have below, of course. All right, now the adjustments that I was talking about that Patty had sent about the back. Again, this is what I love about these patterns. So there's a ton of options of like adding width, you know, here are lines here for, this is a flat back tuck. You know, if you've got a flat bum, there are instructions that are actually in the pattern, but this is what she's talking about. Um, so this would be the sewing line, the regular sewing line, which is five eighths of an inch, this top line here. Now, if you need more room for it to hike up, you can try sewing it at this line or at this line. Or if you're doing a pattern tissue fitting, you can cut back to those lines to determine which one you want to use. Basically, this is a three eighths of an inch scoop. So you don't want to cut the pattern at this line. This is where it wants to sew. So you can come up five eighths of an inch from this um, or whichever line. The cut line is five eighths of an inch from this, this first one. That is the sewing line that's there. If you decide to use this line, you obviously want to bring your cut line in that much too. And you know, the same for this one as well. So if you're needing that extra room, that is um, what that's for. So it's very, very helpful. Um, and sometimes having a little bit deeper crotch curve is just what you need just to get the pants hiked up all the way in the back. Again, you may find that you need to add at the lengthen and shorten line here. Um, but again, all length um, added and removed needs to happen on this piece, not on the yoke. Keep the yoke as is. And that you will also need to match up, you know, if you take anything at this side of, or remove anything, to add or remove anything at the side here, you need to do the same to the front. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. Okay, guys, I'm going to cut these out. Um, and I am going to interface, put the interfacing um, on my fly pieces, 
and I'm going to meet you at the sewing table to do, we're gonna sew up our front pockets and get our fronts all sewn up together. I will see you over there. All right, so for today, we are gonna be doing the front um, of our jeans with except the fly. I'm gonna wait and do the fly next week so that that is a separate video just to make it easy for people to find later. Um, so we'll do the fly next week and then the week following we'll do the back and then we will um, do some baste fitting, um, baste the front and the back together to do some fitting, um, make sure that we've got everything where we want it before we actually sew the inseam and outseam and then um, finish them off with attaching the waistband, hemming, belt loops, rivets, buttons, that kind of stuff. So for today, we need piece two, which is uh, the back part of our pocket, kind of the side. You will also need your coin pocket, which is piece one. Um, you'll need piece three, which is, they call it the pocket facing, but it's the inside of your pocket. I, I used um, more of my, for my shirt dress. Had just enough scraps for some good pockets out of that. And then your front pieces, which is piece 12. Yes, the front, which is piece 12. Now again, I have cut mine with my um, fly grown on. I showed you how I did that. But I've gone ahead and I used piece five, which is my fly, um, for my interfacing. And I've interfaced, you can see, both sides of that fly area. You will need to go in and mark this dot. So I haven't done that yet. Um, I always do that after I interface face so that I don't lose my mark. But you'll need to go in and mark this dot. That's going to be important to know as well. And it's also on the front of the pants, I guess. So those are the um, pieces that we're going to need for today. I also want to talk, um, obviously I'll put you in my lap when I'm doing the actual sewing, but on my industrial machine I have just regular, um, I use Guterman Mara 100 thread for pretty much 99% of my sewing. Um, I've got that all loaded up in this machine and then in my home machine is where I have my top stitching thread and then the Guterman Mara 100 in the bobbin. So the top stitching threads on the top, Guterman Mara is on in the bobbin. Now obviously I have the luxury of having two machines where I can go back and forth without having to change that top thread. Uh, for most people I get it that you will have to um, just keep switching out your top thread, which is a bit annoying, but um, you know, not the end of the world. I have a size 16 needle in this machine, just a regular size 16 um, industrial, because it's an industrial machine, but in my home machine with the top stitching thread, which if you're going to be going back and forth with the same, um, well, it depends on the size of your top stitching thread, actually. If you have it, I have a, uh, my top stitching thread is a Mara 30. Um, if you've got something lighter weight than that, like a 70, for instance, or something, um, you could probably get away with a size 16 easily for the whole, the whole um, jean, uh, but I actually have a size 18 jean needle in my home machine because that thread that I'm using is a 30 and that's a, it's a pretty thick thread um, for my top stitching. So I just wanted to talk about needles a little bit. So that's just kind of, you know, keep that in mind um, going forward. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to, we're going to actually start, I need to pull out my instructions just so I know people like to, even though I kind of go off on my own thing quite frequently, it is kind of nice to at least be able to <laughs> reference the instructions as we go. Alrighty. So this pattern, again, has a whole bunch of fitting, fit for real people. It talks about that book and... Um, I mean, they also have their pants for real people. Okay, yeah, so the first page is all about their tissue fitting, which again, I really do want to try, and I may do a whole sew along um, where we kind of explore tissue fitting together on another pattern, because I think that that, I would just like to know how to do it. Okay, so they have you at step one actually interfacing your waistband. I talked about how I don't like to do that. So it's just kind of, um, you know, I, I, I will put the twill tape in my waistband. All right, so for step two, they want you to hem the upper edge of your coin pocket, which is piece one. This little guy right here. You just should have one of those. Um, so once you to turn, okay. 
All right, so there is a fold line on this pattern, which you can see there. So basically, they're asking you to, um, you know, have that marked, fold and press, and then fold under again and press. So it's basically a double fold. Uh, and that's probably three quarters of an inch, so it's probably a three eighths, three eighths type of situation. Um, but you know, basically what we're doing is we are folding, folding again, giving it a good press, and then we're gonna top stitch from the front before we fold in our other sides. Oh, and they're even asking you to miter, okay. Sorry, just kind of reading ahead here. Oh, and maybe we could, okay. All right, also what I wanna talk about, when you are pressing your denim, use a ton of steam, and also what I like to use, after I have steamed it, I hit those steams, those, um, seams and those hems with a mallet. Now this is a wooden mallet. You can use a rubber mallet from any hardware store. Um, I wouldn't use a hammer just because hammers can kind of um, distress the material unless that's what you're wanting, which is definitely an option. Um, but something, a mallet, and then I, so after I have pressed and then steamed, I'm just gonna boom, 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 boom. It just really sets the crease in the denim and helps things to lay flatter. So it makes um, sewing and top stitching a ton easier. So um, I'm gonna go really quickly and um, press that and give it a good whack with my mallet. And then I'm gonna meet you at my other machine because we're actually gonna start with top stitching first um, and get this attached to the um, side front first. So let's go do that. All right, I got some questions about uh, my home machine and the thread that I used when I did my Sewing Notions video. This is how I do, um, this is cross-wound, all the Guterman, obviously this is the top stitching thread, but it's the same with the regular thread I use, is cross-wound. Now this is too long to fit into the, oh my gosh, this is on a tripod, <laughs> to fit in here like you would normally lay your thread down, um, you know, like your Coates and Clark or whatever. Um, Coats and Clark is, is wound around. This is cross wound, so it comes off the top really easily. Sorry, I'm also not filming well here. So anyway, um, a lot of machines come with this extra little piece that can stick in and it can come out. That's what I, use, that's what I put that thread on. Um, so you don't need the thing that comes up, you know, tall that allows the thread to go through it so that it pulls off the top. It comes off this just as easily. So I, I just had some questions about that, so I thought, oh, well, next time I'm on my regular machine, I'll show you how I do that. And that is how. All right, just got to get my, once again, adventures in sewing with a tripod in my lap. Okay, so I've got my piece here, and it's been folded under, and then folded under again, and I've hammered it. Um, I am going to set my machine, I'm going to put it on a stitch length of 3.5. I just find that to be a very attractive um, stitch length for um, the top stitching. And I'm not gonna do any back stitching. I, this this uh, thread can easily get tangled. So I'm just going to start here at one side, um, and the, you know, the sides here on the edge are still raw, and I'm just gonna sew across. And you'll notice a very, good gracious, get off there. <laughs> you'll notice um, a very nice little top stitching. Um, and then of course on the back, I've just got my regular uh, Guterman Mara um, thread that kind of got, that's where I started. Sometimes that'll happen, it'll get pulled through the back when you start. Um, but I've not back stitched anything, which is fine. This is all gonna get um, turned under, or whatever. But now you have some decisions to make. So this is where top stitching with jeans can become a lot of fun. You can, um, I just like to keep things simple, it's just my aesthetic, but you could do a fun decorative stitch on here. If you wanted to do that with all your top stitching, you can use a single line of top stitching, you can do a double line of top stitching. It's just kind of whatever you know, you're feeling. Um, we'll have some uh, creative um, opportunities on the back pocket as well, just kind of depending on, I again, I keep mine kind of boring, it's just my, my boring aesthetic, I guess, but 
<laughs> I've definitely seen some really cool things that people have done on the back pockets of their jeans. Um, some really fun stuff. So there's definitely options. But we'll, of course, we'll be doing that not next week, but the week after. Um, give you that opportunity. So yeah, so you can make that decision now on um, how you want to do your top stitching. I'm just going to do two lines um, a quarter inch apart. And that's kind of what I'm deciding. I haven't, I will trim my tails. I just, honestly, I don't have my scissors right next to me. So <laughs> just wait. Also, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to do a second line. Okay. My second line. So that, and you can make them however far apart you want. You know, it's kind of up to you. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to trim my tails, but I'm going to go over and I'm going to press in the seam allowance, which I believe is five eighths of an inch. I think everything's five eighths of an inch except where it says otherwise. And then I'll press the bottom up. Actually, I'll probably press both sides and I'll give them a good press, a good whack with the mallet. And then I'm going to press the bottom up and give it a good whack with the mallet. And then I'm gonna show you um, how I like to um, trim corners so that things aren't um, poking out. The instructions say to, to like miter the corner basically but you know where you would do that and then fold in and fold in. But um, that might be a little bulky. And I'll show you what I do to make sure that my ends aren't poking out. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. All right, so here's my little coin pocket. So I've got everything, you know, just turned over and pressed and I just hit it with that mallet. It just really helps, especially up here where you have a lot of bulk, it makes it really flat and just goes through your sewing. I mean, it's amazing how much better, it, easier it'll go through your sewing machine when you're dealing with a lot of bulk. All right, so obviously sometimes you get it where, you know, um, actually this one's not too bad, but sometimes, you know, those little edges will kind of peek up, you know, past, you know, the top and that kind of thing, or, you know, it may kind of poke out, you know, at the side or whatever where you don't want that. So what I like to do is once everything is nice and pressed, I actually go in and just kind of trim, not super close, but I just kind of trim those corners off. I mean, it gets rid of some bulk, but it also um, keeps those corners from like popping out. I mean, I don't want to get super close to the fold because I do, you know, we still need to, to top stitch things down. All right, so once you have your little coin pocket prepped, sorry, <laughs> back in focus, you're gonna grab, um, this is piece two. Let me push the machine back a little bit more. Piece two. And you've got these little um, marks here that are for the coin pocket. But you're only putting the coin pocket on the right side. So right side when worn, which is my top piece. So when you think about it, this is the outside, um, this is the inside, so this is the outside um, outer seam. So it will be on the jeans like this. So if this were turned around and on my body, this would be the right side. And I have marked my pocket. Uh, yes, I can see it. You guys aren't gonna be able to see that, but I can. So I'm gonna line up my edges. Um, right there and right there, like so. Can you hear Gidget scratching on the door? I have my so <laughs> It's Saturday, I'm filming this on Saturday, nothing like the last minute. And uh, my family is home, so I've shut the doors to my sewing room. And now I have a very angry dog who just realized that I'm not upstairs and she wants to be with me and I've shut the door on her. All right, so I just like to place some um, pins there. And now we have some other options for top stitching. Now you can do, you know, like with a shirt um, pocket or, you know, a lot of patch pockets where you start here and you kind of go up and do the triangle and then come down to top stitch. You can totally do that. I actually like to basically do a large rectangle because I want two lines of top stitching anyway, and I think that that really anchors it well. And at the end of this, we're gonna go in and definitely put a rivet in this far side. <laughs> definitely put a rivet in this far side. 
Um, and someone asked why you put rivets. Rivets are great. They help uh, reinforce areas where there could be pullage. You know, if you're putting your hand in this, I mean, does anyone really use their coin pockets? But um, that's why they're there for, you know, if you're putting stuff and putting your hand in and out of those pockets, that's why rivets are there to help those reinforce those corners. Um, that are there. And so now they're just kind of a, a nice detail to add to jeans. So we could put them on either side of this little pocket. Um, I'll probably just put it on the outside. Um, that's a little more traditional, but you can do what you want. You can put them on either. So um, let's now go to the machine. I'm going to put this other piece over here and we're going to top stitch this down in place. Okay. So got everything nice and pinned. So I'm going to start, um, here's the top part of my pocket. Actually, we're going to go this way. Sorry. <laughs> There's the top part of my pocket. There's the bottom. Um, and I'm not going to start at the very top. I find it can just be really bulky and kind of hard. You can get real a lot of um, thread tangles really easily. So I'm really just edge stitching when it comes down to it, which is a little difficult because I'm kind of far away from the machine here. <laughs> but I'll show you. Um, I'm actually starting below where that folded um, top of that edge is because we, I do backstitch, but not until we get to the very end. So we're basically doing a circle. So I'm just gonna sew all the way around the pocket. I'm very careful when I get that bottom, especially because I'm kind of far away from it. Don't be afraid to use your hand wheel. That's gonna be your best friend when sewing jeans. Okay, when I get to the top here, I'm gonna sew all the way up and then I'm going to count how many stitches I go over. So we'll go one, two, three probably. Yep, perfect. And then we're gonna come back down. Watch out if you got pins. This is a small area here. One more stitch. Move that pin. My top stitching got a little wonky on the way down here, but I'm not even going to worry about it. Not for my coin pocket. That's probably going to be good. Yeah. Okay. Now. As you can see, see I started down here. I'm gonna trim, especially that top thread there. Now remember, we did three stitches on the other side. One, uh-oh, two, oh, I'm only gonna get two. See, I got wonky. Okay, well. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. Actually, that looks better than the other side where I did three. So maybe two stitches if you're doing 3.5. Again, this is my coin pocket. I am not a perfectionist. And um, there's going to be rivets. They're going to be covering this side, definitely. I haven't decided about that side yet. So anyway, when all is said and done, we have a coin pocket that is stitched on to this back part of this pocket. Sorry, I'm kind of up close and personal. So now we're gonna go back over to my regular machine and um, uh, sew the pocket facing, I think they call it, piece three, to the front of the jeans, and then this will get sewn. So let's go finish that. So back over. So if you are staying on one machine, switch from your top stitching thread to your regular thread now. Okay, so now we need, here, let me get back here. Um, this is piece three. So now we're gonna be doing steps uh, five through nine in the instructions, basically. So this is piece 
three, which is out of your tightly woven cotton. And then I've got the front of the jeans, which is piece 12. Um, and we're gonna be sewing the pocket pieces to the front. Okay, so what we're going to do, now you can decide which side of your fabric you want to be the right side. I know that there are quite a few jean patterns that the um, actual, the back part that goes, that's kind of the side, even though ours is all denim, a lot of them do do a facing, that's what you see, and then the it sits on top of, you know, this same fabric in the back. So if you wanted pretty on the inside um, type finishing, you can sew it the opposite way that you normally would, if that makes sense. So instead of this being the right side, you would count this as the wrong side. So basically the wrong side is gonna be the pocket bag that you would see on the inside of your pants. Right side is gonna be the side that you see inside your pocket when you're looking down into it. Now this pants pattern, because it uses the um, denim for the whole back part, I mean that's all you're gonna see on the inside of the jeans, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna be the right side of the fabric, I'm gonna be counting as the right side of the fabric, but know that that is an option depending on what pattern you're using. Okay, so we're going to start, we're going to pick a side here. I'm going to put this one, obviously do one on camera here with you. All right, so we've got our piece face up. Um, you'll either have your grown on facing or you won't. Um, and I'm trying to see, okay, yeah. If you don't have your grown on facing, if you're using it per the pattern, this doesn't get sewn on yet anyway, so it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to take one of our pieces here, and we're going to sew it, that one over there, right sides together. So we are going to sew the curve here and I believe that that is, yeah, I think it's just five eighths of an inch at that point. And you've got a little notch here at the curve of the pocket. It should match up. But what we're going to do is we're gonna sew from here all the way around the curve of the pocket to the outside. And um, I mean, technically you should probably have the pocketing against the feed dogs, but they're both pretty stable fabrics, so. And again, you should have your regular thread out right now. So if you're using the same machine, um, you need to have your lighter thread, not the top stitching thread in right now. Although it gets switched, it does, there is a lot of back and forth switching between top stitch thread. <laughs> it can get a little annoying. All right, so five eighths of an inch, I'm gonna sew this curve. I also have a really long tail since I just, there we go. Um, also, the I have people have asked about the stitch length to, for me to talk about that. I'm using just a regular 2.5 millimeter stitch length when I'm sewing with my regular thread. 3.5 when I'm doing the top stitching, 2.5 when I'm just sewing regularly. All right, so once we've got that curve sewn, um, I like to go in and clip first. So I'm going to clip into this curve just so it lies nice and flat. About, I don't know, every half inch. And I'm clipping to the stitching, not through it. And then really about to the notch because then it flattens out here and then you're good. So really just kind of the curve area I have clipped. And then I want to go back and I'm going to um, actually cut this seam allowance in half just because depending on how bulky your um, denim is, this can be a rather bulky seam. So I'm just cutting that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance in half. All right. Now, of course, I'm gonna go do this to the other side as well. I just, I'm not gonna do that on camera because there's no need. Um, but now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna turn this 
to the wrong side. And we're gonna give this um, whole pocket curve a really good press. And you obviously want to, let me get this all flipped here. I'm gonna use my mallet. I, I literally use that mallet on every seam. So I'm going to press, and I really want to favor so that a little bit of that denim is showing on the wrong side, because I don't want my pocketing showing on the right side. Okay, so I'm going to press that really, really well. Um, obviously, I'm going to do this to the other side as well. Um, and then after that, we got to switch back to the top stitching. So I will um, meet you at the other machine, or you need to switch back to your top stitching thread. Okay, I'm getting ready to, um, I'm going to show you how I do this, obviously, instead of this on camera, but I want to show you kind of where we're ending up here. Now, for some reason, I just like one line of top stitching on my pockets. I know it doesn't go with anything else, the rest of the jeans, um, but I don't know, I find it too fussy to have parallel lines. Uh, so I just do one here, and then on the back, it's going to look like this. So there is your pocket right now. Obviously, we're going to, we haven't sewn the pocket, the rest of the pocket part on there. So that's going to get sewn here in a little bit but that's what we're going for, okay? All right, so I've obviously, oh, sorry, palm the camera. All right, let's bring our machine back towards us and adjust it so that you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, again, just pound the, it's actually, jean making can be very therapeutic. Just pound the living daylights with your mallet. Out of all the, it just flattens everything so nice and neat. Make sure, you know, my jeans are favored on the wrong side there. It's just, it's actually a very therapeutic practice. All right, so I sew at a quarter of an inch. Again, normally I'm much closer to my machine when I'm sewing. So we're just gonna kinda hope that this is where it's supposed to be. <laughs> then we're just going to top stitch. Another trick, before I go any further, if you're having issues with your machine feeding because of the thick thread with the top stitching, if you'll grab both your bobbin thread and your top stitching thread from the back and kind of pull back, it will help keep things from tangling and also help feed it through so much easier if you're having any issues there. Just a little, and that works for a lot of things. All right. And again, I am not back stitching when I do the top stitching. I am for the regular stitching, but not for the top stitching. It just gets too bulky. So there we go. We have that nice and top stitched. And there's the um, pocketing on the back. All right, so now we're gonna go, I know, I, I, I realize that this gets so annoying having to go back and forth between top stitch thread and regular thread if you're sewing this on a regular machine. But now we're gonna go back to, and let me think this through. We're gonna go back to um, regular thread and I think we're done. Oh, no, we'll have to go back to top stitching thread I think one more time. Um, well, will we? Yes. Yes, we'll have to go back one more time, but then that's it. <laughs> All right, so let's go back and uh, to regular thread and uh, get our pockets sewn on. All right, so um, now you're going to need your, what were these, piece two, I guess? So we've got our one that has the little pocket on it and the one that doesn't. Um, and so these are going to get sewn to the back. So let me just, we'll just do the one that has our coin pocket. That makes it easier to see front and back. Um, that is this piece, let me move those. All right, so basically what we are doing is we are going to sew this piece so that it is behind that pocket piece is basically what the end game here. <laughs> so we're gonna flip it over and we are, um, actually it's right sides together but we are only working with our pocket piece, our two pocket pieces basically. And you should have notches. So there's double notches here on the side seam and you could definitely pin ugh, if you need to. The idea is to not get the um, pants in this at all. And then there should be, there's a notch here at the bottom of that curve. 
that we are going to pin. And then here at the top. All right, so we are going to sew, um, and I'm probably going to sew with the um, the lining piece down. But we are going to sew from one side. Um, and actually, we're probably going to start from this side. <laughs> so we're not messing with the side seams at all because those will get caught into the side seam, obviously. So um, let me orientate that correctly. So here's our side seam here. So we're going to start here at the side seam, only sewing the two pocket pieces together. And we're going to sew around the corner and all the way up here to the top. But again, we're going to fold the actual jeans, uh, front of the jeans, out of the way because we only want to work with our two pocket pieces. And again, we're ugh, back with our regular thread and our... Um, five eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. And I am uh, back tacking with this, with this thread. So again, we have only sewn the two pocket pieces together. We've kept them free of the jeans. Let me so now I'm gonna go over to the um, serger, but you can finish these off however you would like. And I'm gonna serge that seam that I just made. So I'm gonna serge all the way from here all the way up to here. I'm actually gonna take you over to the serger because then when we're finished doing that, um, we're actually going to go ahead and serge our front edge here, um, and I had a lot of questions on how to do that, so um, we'll do that as well, okay? All right, so let's go over to the serger. Obviously, you're going to do this for the second side as well, and then I'll meet you at the serger, and we'll finish this off and also finish off our front edge. Okay, so once again, I'm going to show you where we're going here. So here is um, my pocket, and I have surged the whole um, curved edge, that seam that we've done. And then we are also going to surge the front of the fly. Now, I'm not surging all the way through to the to the crotch curve, because I want to surge those together when those get sewn together. Um, and you'll it'll make more sense here in a second. I've got a ton of questions, though, on how I surge to make this look somewhat neat. Um, and so, yeah, so we are just surging this, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Um, yeah, because we do clip into the seam allowance down here, which may seem like it's going to cause a weakness, but then when we do some top stitching, we secure it all back up again, so <laughs> I've got you covered. All right, so, uh, yes, so that's where we're going, so let me, um, obviously I've done that side, so now let's do this together. I've had a lot of questions about, um, if I can show when I'm actually surging, people that have sergers and are a little nervous about using them. So hopefully you guys can see and hopefully because I do have to be rather far back to have this <laughs> tripod in my lap and then also um, my arms are short. So <laughs> all right so this is the pocket edge that I'm going to do first. It's just that seam where we've sewn those two pocket pieces together and I am keeping the um, front of the pants completely out of this. So um, you can, since this has already been sewn, if you trim off a little bit of that seam allowance, it's not the end of the world. In fact, I kind of like to neaten it up a little bit. Um, and some people prefer just to kind of trim that seam allowance. So it's up to you. Um, because the seam's already been sewn, we don't have to keep that consistent. So, And you don't have to finish it with a surgery. You could finish it with a zigzag. You could finish it with bias binding if you really wanted to. Um, it's kind of up to you. But I'm obviously using a serger. So um, yeah. Hopefully this makes sense. I just want to say, the edge here of my serger, this little edge right here, if I line up the raw edge of my fabric with that right there, that is sewing at 3 eighths of an inch when you get to the far left needle here. Um, so it's trimming off about an eighth of an inch, in other words, if I'm lining it up here. 
um, and then I've got my lines here so if I line it up to the L which I don't know if you can see that, it's the second line over. That is 5 eighths of an inch for the left needle. So that's, no, that's not right. That's not right, I'm sorry. That's 5 eighths of an inch is the first one. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, from that left needle. So if I'm sewing something with a 5 eighths inch seam allowance and I want to trim all of the excess because this just leaves the knife between the knife and the, the two needles leaves a quarter of an inch seam allowance so basically you're trimming away 3 eighths of a seam uh, 3 eighths of an inch is that right yeah oh no then I do want to go over to this L sorry 5 eighths of an inch to that L sorry I just made that really confusing and I apologize all right let's just surge <laughs> As you saw, I trimmed off about an eighth of an inch as I went, um, just to make, just to trim off any inconsistencies in my raw edges. That way it just looks really nice and neat from both the front and the back. All right, so that has been done. We'll be basting that here in a second. So now we are gonna go over here. Now this only applies if you've done the grown on um, fly piece that's right here. So I am going to surge all the way down, and now I have not sewn anything here. I wanna just, you know, if I trim off a few of these little scraggly, you know, hairs kind of, that's fine, but I wanna trim as little, I mean, if uh, you really wanna trim hardly anything, like nothing, because I don't wanna lose my seam, any of my seam allowance. Um, but I'm gonna surge all the way down, and then when I make this curve, I'm actually going to fold this, and you'll see me, I'm going to fold this section away to surge off. Now sometimes this little fold can get caught and you got to unpick a little bit. Um, but that is how I finish off this part. So here we go. Make sure that that is in focus. So I'm coming up on that curve where it goes in and then comes back out for the crotch. And I'm just gonna take this piece and I'm gonna fold it out of the way as best as I can. And surge right off. And there it kinda, oh, sorry. Hopefully you can see that, where it kind of goes in. I do have a little bit of where, when I was cutting with the rotary cutter, cutter where it kind of got it, um, which made it a little easier actually to fold that out of the way. But um, that is how I do that. And then when we have sewn this, we can go back and, um, which we'll do here in a minute, that'll get surged together, okay? So that's how we finish off that fly edge and then I'm just gonna trim my threads. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the machine. Um, we're still using regular thread and we're actually gonna baste the pockets closed. And then we're gonna sew our fronts together and get those ready for the zipper for next time. So let's go back to the other machine. Okay, we are going to baste our pocket pieces um, to kind of create one here. So I've obviously have everything um, wrong side up at the moment. Basically what we wanna do is we want everything to lie flat. So kind of just smooth things with your hands. Make sure that your tops are somewhat lining up. If they don't exactly, that's fine, um, as long as that's in within that seam allowance. Um, let's remember that we have a one inch seam allowance here on the side. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pin here at the top through everything. So now we're basting everything together. And then I'm gonna come over here to the side and I'm gonna put a couple of pins here in the side. And I'm gonna baste um, within my one inch seam allowance. So I'm actually probably gonna baste it like three eighths of an inch um, just to be on the side. I don't want, I mean, you can unpick your basting stitches obviously, but you know, when you're lazy. <laughs> I'm gonna baste at um, three eighths inch of a seam allowance all the way through. And then I'm gonna baste also at three eighths an inch of a, three eighths of an inch 
here at the top, um, this section, this is basically where that pocket folds over on itself. We're going to baste here at the top. And I'm actually not even going to use, on this basting, I'm just going to use a regular stitch length, the 2.5. Um, because this is going to get all hidden in the seam allowance anyway. So I'm not overly... Oh, dang it. When you're filming in a small area with a tripod on your knee, sometimes you accidentally hit the pedal with your foot and unthread things. Hold on one second. <laughs> okay. Rethreaded. All right, so again, I'm just sewing it 3 eighths of an inch. You can switch to a basting stitch if you'd like. Um, I'm not. <laughs> and then, once you've done the side seam, you also need to go up and do this little bit up here at the top. So then when we flip it over, we've got our, um, it just basically looks like the front of the pants, the way that they are going to look when all is said and done. So there we go. And you've got your front pockets in. All right, I'm going to do that on the other side, and then we're going to come back and we are going to prep our um, front for our zipper for next week. All right, now we're going to sew our fronts together. So this I have marked with an X, hopefully you can see that fine. This is that dot that's on the pattern piece. So if you're not using, um, you know, if you're doing the sew on fly, you wanna go ahead and follow the instructions for that now. Um, so this is, we're basically prepping for our zipper. Um, so this is gonna be kind of um, 10 through, uh, 11 I think because I think they start putting in the nope 10 through 13 so if you're following on the pattern if you are going to do the sew on um, fly piece then this is 10 through 13 obviously I've got my grown on so what we're going to do um, my way <laughs> as I'm going to start at the top now I have drawn in I have clipped on my pattern where center front is um, and on the pattern piece it's just you know uh, five eighths of an inch from the uh, cut edge obviously then I laid my fly piece on top of it but I've just it just makes it a lot easier to sew so I've marked a line with chalk from center front all the way down to my um, dot which I've made with an X so I'm going to use a basting stitch and I'm going to go all the way. When I hit this X, I'm going to back stitch, and then I'm going to start at the X, back stitch again with my regular stitch length and stitch from that mark all the way to through my crotch and through to the end with a regular stitch length. Okay? So I'm going to go to a basting stitch, and it's fine if you've got the back stitch, if you do a back stitch. You're going to try not to hit the pedal. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to be sewing. Obviously, use pins if that's what you like. Um, I'm going to follow my line with a basting stitch. And then when I hit that X, I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to go back to my 2.5. And we're going to start right at that dot again. And you're going to overlap your back stitching a little bit there, and that's okay. In fact, it gives you a little bit more reinforcement. Now I'm going to sew from that point and follow along. And this is 5 eighths of an inch through this one, this part of the seam allowance. And do that. So 2.5 up to the to the dot here, and then it's a basting stitch at a 5.0, um, basically. All right? So now we are going to clip into our seam allowance. Now, um, 
Well, I'm kind of losing my X there, but I can see where my um, stitches are. You've got to think about this on how this is being worn. So I want to clip, but I only want to clip on the right seam allowance because there's no need to have excess um, clippings going on here. Um, because when things are, when we've opened things up, this is what we're going for here. Ugh. When all is said and done, um, we're going to be pressing our, these fly pieces open, and I want my um, this part of my fly piece to be pressed to the left-hand side when worn. Okay? Does that make sense? Because that's going to get um, top-stitched in all sorts of goodies. So I only, because this part's going to be pressed open to that point, we need to clip here so that we can press this seam allowance to the left. And is that right? Left and worn. Yeah. <laughs> See, I have to think about this too. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip basically where this part goes in. And we're going to clip from the edge to your dot. Okay, just on that one side. And then I'm gonna go to the, um, mach or the machine, the um, ironing board, and we're gonna press this open, and then press this to the left. Okay, so I'm gonna go do that. Now, what you can do, because this is cut now, you can hit this with fray check, and I often do that just to be on the safe side. So put some fray check on either side here, and then um, when you're pressing, it'll just help keep that from raveling later on. But this is going to get a ton of um, top stitching and stuff when all is said and done. So don't worry too much about this being weak here. Um, yeah, I've I've had I have had a weak spot in jeans that I've made at this point, and um, yeah, I've I've got some ways to kind of um, help with that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to press it open above the dot, and then below the dot, we're going to press it to the left. Now, before we do that, though, we need to finish off our seam allowance. So I'm going to go back to the serger, and we're going to finish these two guys off together. And I'm going to show you how I do that um, as cleanly as possible. So let's go finish that off, and then we will press things. All right, so I'm going to start actually at the um, inseam and sew up. And so I'm sewing both seam allowance, or um, serging both seam allowances together. You can trim some off here if you'd like. In fact, that's kind of nice because it kind of removes some of that bulk. I'm not going to trim a ton. I'm going to trim like an eighth of an inch off though, just so I can get everything caught in my top stitching later. Okay, now this is where we have clipped right here, right? So we are going to very carefully And when we get to this point, we're just going to surge off. Trim our threads. Okay, so we do have raw edge right here where we've trimmed. I'm going to hit that with fray check just to be on the safe side. But we're going to go press this open and press this to the left. All right, and now... Um, after you've done that, let's meet back at the machine, but we're going to meet at the um, top stitching. We're going to do one last thing of top stitching. So switch back to top stitching, and I will meet you there. All right, so let's just take a look here. <laughs> so we've got it pressed open up here at the top, and then down here at the bottom, this is where we've cut, and I put some fray check there, which actually kind of glues it down almost, which isn't a bad thing. And then I've pressed the seam allowance to the left. All right, and this is all left when worn. So this is the right side that's got my little coin pocket. This is the left side, and that's all when worn. So now we're going to flip it over, and we're actually just going to do, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we're actually just gonna do one line of top stitching onto the left side of the pants, which is actually the right side of the seam if you're while you're sewing. But when worn, this is the left side. So we're going to edge stitch basically and sew really close to that seam and we're going to sew just one line all the way down 
all the way down. Make sure that your seam allowance is pushed over when you get down here to the bottom that it's pushed to the, now it's the right hand side because of where we're turning, but towards the left hand side when worn. Um, we're just going to do one line of top stitching. Now, when we put the zipper in and stuff, a second line of top stitching is going to go in because we're going to bar tack our um, fly shield and all that stuff down. But we just need this one line of top stitching right now. So we're going to bring the machine back up. I need longer arms. And again, no back stitching. You just want to make sure that those fly pieces are both open on the back. You don't want to accidentally catch something you don't want to catch. No back stitching. I'm edge stitching, so sewing, sewing somewhere between a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch from the seam line. Okay, let me push this back so you can see what we've done here. All right, so it also helps to adjust the camera. Ah, ha, ha, look at that. So we just have one line of top stitching. So my seam line um, is right here. So I'm just right to the right-hand side of that, which is the left-hand side of the pants when worn. But I just have one line of top stitching all the way down to the, um, the crotch, the, the inseam, basically, okay? So again, this will all start to look more like jeans as we put in the um, fly, but everything is pressed open here in the back. And then once, obviously, once we've got down here, everything's pressed to the left. All right, so that's where we're gonna stop today. And next week we will put in our fly, um, our zipper, and then we will be all set um, with the front. And then we'll move on to the back the following week. All right, as always, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll try to address those um, in the following week. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye-bye.